Welcome back everyone and I'm here again with Jeff Grant, SBR contributor and today we're going to be talking about that San Francisco 49ers game against the Denver Broncos. How are you doing this morning Jeff? Going to be doing better Dax because this is really a high profile game to close out the Sunday slate here in Las Vegas between two of the best teams in the NFL that are major Super Bowl contenders. Yep, yep. And bookies, they're actually establishing the Niners as underdogs for the first time in the season as they travel to Mile High to play the Broncos in this Sunday nighter, which to me, like you said, is one of the best games of the week. Now, Denver comes into this one as the ninth best offense in the league while being the fourth best defense. And the Niners, they haven't been too shabby either as they're coming in as 15th best in the offense in the league while being the second best defense overall. But does all that actually provide some value uh, to betters if they decide to back the Niners in this game as underdogs? I'm always one that likes to back a team, specifically a winning team with a strong head coach, when they land in an underdog role the first time during an NFL season. And you should definitely consider backing the 49ers if that's the direction that you're looking to go because the 49ers under Harbaugh's tutelage, 7-4-1 and one against the spread as underdogs since they grabbed them from Stanford. So Denver and uh, Peyton Manning continue to roll along with their season, but I think that you kind of have to agree with me on this one, as I believe that the Broncos, they're not playing at the level that they were last year. I mean, in my opinion, they've actually had a slight drop in production-wise. I mean, how, how do you think the Broncos' performance looks like so far uh, compared this year to the team that actually suffered that blowout loss in the Super Bowl just last season, uh, Jeff? I think the Broncos are still trying to figure out what they have around Peyton Manning. Yeah. Um, they had 14 new players on the roster when starting the season. Also lost no Sean Marino, who I believe was just a designated loss for the year for the Miami Dolphins. Um, he was really the main force in the running game that uh, provided some balance. And of course, Denver playing without backup running back from a season ago, Monte Ball. So it's really all about the passing game and also the Broncos uh, don't have Eric Decker anymore, but Sanders has filled in nicely. So, yes, they haven't performed at the level that they did last year, but let's just remember, Dax, no offense performed at that level in the history of the NFL like the Broncos of 2013. Yeah, no doubt, man. All right, now, like I said, the 49ers are the second-best defense in the league overall, but they are going to be going up to mile high where the air is pretty thin, and they're possibly also going to be without linebacker star Patrick Willis due to his lingering toe injury. And we know that he's a very fundamental part of that number two defense. But in your opinion, Jeff, how big of a concern is this for San Francisco going into this game? That middle of the defense has really no depth right now. Uh, they're relying on unproven players, um, some rookies, and Willis is the quarterback of that group. And when you're trying to match wits with the like of Peyton Manning, who really can change whatever call he wants to make at the line of scrimmage, you need some you need some veteran leadership in the middle of that defense, and the 49ers simply aren't going to get that. And he'll be able to neutralize that pass rush that the 49ers have been known to produce because he gets the ball quickly out to his wide receivers. And the 49ers are also injured in the secondary. So there are injuries that are major concerns for the 49ers defense going into a situation on a short week after a Monday night win in St. Louis and then traveling on the road again. This game could get a bit interesting in the second half if the 49ers don't have Willis. All right, man. So right now, this line opened up at uh, minus seven in favor of the Broncos. What are you going to recommend here? Should we actually lay the points or should we think about fading Denver in this case? That six and a half scares the daylights out of me. It <laughs> really does. It scares the yep. daylights out of me because the, the odds makers could have easily established this number at seven. And I think they would have gotten even action uh, especially after Willis basically is doubtful. Um, so that scares the daylights out of me because I think everybody's going to land on that six and a half eventually. So I'm going to look at the total just basically for the sake of the 49ers offense can look at the tape of what the Seahawks did in the Super Bowl against Denver and really scheme against that defense. The 49ers have some weapons and the right type of personnel to be able to move the football against Denver's uh, defense. And as I said, I think Manning's going to have success on the other side. And the Broncos, uh, the over is 13-5-1 in the Broncos' last 19 home games, all of those with Manning under center. So I'm going to go over the total on Sunday night. All right, good stuff, my man. As always, Jeff, it's a pleasure talking football with you, and I look forward to doing it again soon, man. Thank you. No problem. And for SBR Picks, this is Dax Floyd.
The SBR network offers free sports picks and game breakdowns. Big money free betting contests year round, a real time Vegas style odds monitoring service and much more. So come see for yourself. To stay updated on SBR news and promotions, follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Google Plus and do be sure to subscribe to the Sportsbook Review YouTube channel to catch all our daily sports shows.